This is Jean McKenna, director of ACE In-Home Tutoring, located in Fairfield, Connecticut. Welcome to Volume 2 of the Vocabulary Booster. This audio CD contains 200 of the most essential yet troublesome words in the English language. Each word comes with a short, simple definition and an easy-to-remember contextual usage sentence. Mastering these words will lead to improved reading comprehension ability and better grades at school. Knowledge of these words is also a key factor in improving scores on standardized tests such as the SAT and ACT. For those already out of school, a stronger vocabulary can lead to greater success on the job and career advancement. So, let's get started. And remember, the more you listen, the more you'll learn. Good luck. Abhor. Abhor. It's a verb meaning to strongly detest or dislike. I abhor the horrible violence I see in so many horror movies. Abstemious. Abstemious. It's an adjective meaning sparing in food and drink. Abby, who eats nothing but steamed vegetables, is quite abstemious. Abstract. Abstract. It's an adjective meaning theoretical, not concrete. Much of modern art is fairly abstract. The American artist Jackson Pollock, who literally dripped paint onto the canvas, was renowned for his abstract expressionism. Acquiesce. Acquiesce. It's a verb meaning to agree with, to go along with, or submit. If you acquiesce to my demands, you'll be quiet and just say yes. Adversary. Adversary. It's a noun meaning opponent or enemy. An adversary will usually present you with adversity. Advocate. Advocate. As a verb, it means to support. As a noun, pronounced advocate, it means someone who supports someone or something. Many environmental advocates are very vocal about advocating tougher environmental regulations to help protect the environment. Alleviate. Alleviate. It's a verb meaning to relieve. The medicine called Aleve is known for alleviating headaches and flu symptoms. Ambiguous. Ambiguous. It's an adjective meaning unclear in meaning. Amber ran into some big trouble when she encountered numerous ambiguous questions on the test. Ambivalent. Ambivalent. It's an adjective meaning torn between two conflicting emotions. The ambidextrous pitcher was somewhat ambivalent about whether to pitch lefty or righty on opening day. Amorphous. Amorphous. It's an adjective meaning lacking a definite shape or form. A jellyfish is quite amorphous whereas a goldfish is not. Note that the root of this word is morph, which means form. The a in this case means without, and the us is a typical adjective suffix. Another common morph word is metamorphosis, which means the act of changing into a different form, such as when a caterpillar changes into a butterfly. In slang today, however, the term morph has now taken on the meaning of change itself. Anachronistic. Anachronistic. It's an adjective meaning obsolete or outdated. Transportation by horse and buggy, although very popular in its day, 
is now considered quite anachronistic. By the way, the root of this word is kron, meaning time. Other notable words in this group include chronological, chronic, and chronometer. Anecdote, anecdote. It's a noun meaning a short story intended to instruct or amuse. President Ronald Reagan was well known for a tendency to liberally sprinkle his press conferences with anecdotes of his Hollywood days. Note: Be careful not to confuse this word with antidote, which is a medicine designed to fight off the effects of a poison. Arbitrary, arbitrary. It's an adjective meaning random or by chance. It's a bit scary to realize that the ups and downs of life can often be quite arbitrary. Archaic, archaic. It's an adjective meaning outdated or obsolete. The words "thou" and "thine," meaning "you" and "yours," were quite popular in Shakespeare's day, but are now considered archaic. By the way, the root of this word is arc or arch, which means first. So this word refers to the first or olden times. Other arch words are archbishop and archaeology. Articulate, articulate. It's an adjective meaning skillful in the use of language, well spoken. Most good poets. Are rather articulate artists. Ascendancy, ascendancy. It's a noun meaning the state of rising or going up. Domination. Michael Jordan and the Chicago Bulls were in a position of ascendancy in the NBA during much of the 1990s. Ascent, ascent. It's a noun meaning agreement. As a verb, it means to agree. When you assent to something, you, by definition, give your consent. Assiduous, assiduous. It's an adjective meaning hardworking or diligent. Sid is an assiduous worker who never just sits around. Astute, astute. It's an adjective meaning smart or perceptive. Ashley likes boys who are both cute and astute. Augment, augment. It's a verb meaning to increase in size, to swell. It was the intent of Augustus Caesar. To augment the size of the Roman Empire. Auspicious, auspicious. It's an adjective meaning favorable, fortunate, or boding well for the future. I believe that my pre-game ritual of eating three chocolate chip cookies is both delicious and auspicious. Austere. Austere. It's an adjective meaning stark or severely simple. Austin Powers, of movie fame, does not seem to believe in living an austere lifestyle. By the way, the noun is austerity. In difficult economic times, certain governments are forced to undertake austerity measures, which normally involves cutting the budget. In reducing services, autocratic, autocratic. It's an adjective, and it means having total power. It is basically automatic that dictators are autocratic. Autonomy, autonomy. It's an adjective meaning independence. When a person gets a driver's license and an automobile, 
This normally leads to a great increase in autonomy. Avaricious. Avaricious. It's an adjective meaning greedy. Some people become rich by being avaricious. Avuncular. Avuncular. It's an adjective meaning having the qualities of an uncle. Ava's uncle is quite avuncular. Behemoth. Behemoth. It's a noun meaning a giant or something huge. Mothra, of Japanese sci fi movie fame, is, believe it or not, a behemoth of a moth. Benefactor. Benefactor. It's a noun meaning One who helps or provides financial support. After Ben graduated from school and started a successful business, he became a major benefactor of his university. By the way, almost any time a word begins with Ben, it has a positive meaning because Ben means good. You can notice this in such words as benevolent, beneficiary, benefit, for example. Benevolent. Benevolent. It's an adjective meaning kind or good hearted. Benjamin Franklin is usually regarded as a very benevolent figure in American history. Cantankerous. Cantankerous. It's an adjective meaning ornery or agitated. Spending all day cooped up in a hot, rumbling tank. Can make a tank gunner very cantankerous. Castigate. Castigate. It's a verb meaning to scold severely or berate. The cast of the play was castigated by the director for what he considered to be a very poor performance. Caustic. Caustic. It's an adjective meaning biting or scornful. The humor of certain comedians can be both caustic and sarcastic. Cliche. Cliche. It's a noun meaning an overused saying or expression. Cleopatra's favorite cliche for postcard writing was this The weather is great. Wish you were here. Love, Cleo. Colloquial. Colloquial. It's an adjective meaning pertaining to the common, everyday language of a people or related to informal speech and slang. The locals in this part of the country tend to talk in a rather colloquial way. Reporters on the national TV news, however, Try to avoid colloquial speech. Commemorate. Commemorate. It's a verb meaning to honor the memory of someone or something. The 4th of July is celebrated in the U.S. to commemorate the birth of American independence. Complacent. Complacent. It's an adjective meaning peaceful or Easy going. Although the team was in first place in their division, their coach did not want them to get complacent, and he actually increased the difficulty and duration of their daily practices. Condone. Condone. It's a verb meaning to allow something to happen, which perhaps shouldn't be happening, or to give approval to a questionable act. Most parents do not condone underage smoking or drinking by their children. Conflagration. Conflagration. It's an adjective meaning a great fire. A conflagration is made up of flames. This is a tough word. 
If I were you, I would look at the FLA in the middle of conflagration and try to link it with the word flame. Cryptic. Cryptic. It's an adjective meaning secretive, hidden, or hard to understand. Before the Rosetta Stone was discovered, Egyptologists were usually puzzled by the cryptic hieroglyphics that they found on many ancient Egyptian crypts. Please note that the root of this word is, indeed, crypt, which is a kind of burial chamber that is, not surprisingly, dark and hidden away. Definitive. Definitive. It's an adjective meaning defining or held up as the ultimate example of something. Martin Luther King's I Have a Dream speech was perhaps the definitive and defining speech of his career. Delineate. Delineate. It's a verb meaning to mark with a line. Homeowners in the suburbs often delineate their property boundaries with fences, walls, or hedges. Desecrate. Desecrate. It's a verb, and it means to violate, to defile, or to make impure. Vandals sometimes desecrate a church or temple by spray-painting it with graffiti. Destitute. Destitute. It's an adjective meaning extremely poor. Mr. Jones kept all his savings under his mattress. After his house was destroyed in a fire, he became destitute. Deterrent. Deterrent. It's a noun meaning something that tends to prevent something from happening. Some people who favor capital punishment believe that it will serve as a deterrent to crime. The verb for this word, by the way, is deter. Detrimental. Detrimental. It's an adjective meaning harmful. A mental block can be detrimental to clear thinking. Devious. Devious. It's an adjective meaning tricky, crafty, or unprincipled. A devious person can be quite devilish. Diatribe. Diatribe. It's a noun meaning a lengthy and accusatory speech. In a diatribe against the white man, the Indian chief told the warriors that it would be an honor to die in defense of the tribe. Digress. Digress. It's a verb meaning to turn away from the main point or to get off track. To progress means to move forward. To regress means to move backwards. And to digress means to move to the side. Oftentimes, in the middle of a lecture, a teacher might say to the class, let me digress for a moment and then move on to an unrelated subject before coming back to the main topic. Dilatory. Dilatory. It's an adjective meaning tending to delay. Dilatory students tend to hand in their term papers late. Diminution. Diminution. It's a noun meaning a decrease. The word diminution, by definition, means a diminishing in size. Disdain. Disdain. It's a noun meaning contempt or scorn. Chihuahua lovers like their dogs small and generally have disdain for larger breeds such as Great Danes. Diverge. Diverge. It's a verb meaning to split apart. Diverge 
is the opposite of converge. By the way, The Road Not Taken, a famous poem by Robert Frost, starts with the line, Two paths diverged in a yellow wood. Doff, doff. It's a verb meaning to take off an item of clothing. To doff a cap is to take it off. Don, don. It's a verb meaning put on, especially an article of clothing. To don a cap is to put it on. Draconian, draconian. It's an adjective meaning extremely harsh, severe, or oppressive. Some believe that Dracula inflicts draconian punishment on his victims. Ebullient, ebullient. It's an adjective meaning extremely joyful. The Chicago Bulls fans were ebullient when the Bulls won the championship. Edify, edify. It's a verb meaning to instruct. A good education can be very edifying. Egregious, egregious. It's an adjective meaning extremely bad or mistaken. The egret made the egregious mistake of wading into a swamp full of alligators. Eloquent, eloquent. It's an adjective meaning well-spoken and marked by expressive and persuasive speech. To American ears, the British have a way of sounding both elegant and eloquent. Elusive, elusive. It's an adjective meaning hard to capture, skillful at avoiding detection. The elusive wide receiver used his speed and agility to elude his would-be tacklers. Emissary, emissary. It's a noun meaning agent or messenger. A missionary is a kind of emissary of the church. Erudition, erudition. It's a noun meaning scholarship or deep learning. Harvard and Yale are both known for their tradition of erudition. Note that the adjective is erudite, also pronounced erudite. Eschew, eschew. It's a verb meaning to avoid. Because I'm allergic to cashew nuts, I generally eschew them. Etymology, etymology. It's a noun meaning the study of word origins. If you study etymology, you will likely not confuse that word with entomology, which means the study of insects. Euphemism, euphemism. It's a noun meaning a pleasant way of saying something unpleasant. The phrase pass away is a euphemism for the word die. By the way, Note that the prefix of this word is you, spelled E-U, which means good. Other U words include eulogy, which is a speech of praise normally given at a funeral service, and euphony, which means a sweet mixture of sounds. Evanescent, evanescent. It's an adjective meaning vanishing quickly, fleeting. The bubbles in Avion mineral water are evanescent. Exalted, exalted. It's an adjective meaning holding a high position. Albert Einstein is perhaps the most exalted scientist of the 20th century. Exemplary, exemplary. It's an adjective meaning serving as an example. The captain of a team should set an example for his teammates 
and his or her conduct should therefore be exemplary. Exonerate. Exonerate. It's a verb meaning to free from blame. After the jury came back with a verdict of not guilty, the former defendant exclaimed to the judge, Your Honor, it feels great to be exonerated. Expatriate. Expatriate. It's a noun, meaning someone who leaves his or her native land to settle elsewhere. In the 1920s, F. Scott Fitzgerald and Ernest Hemingway were perhaps the two most famous American expatriate writers living in Paris. By the way, repatriate means to return to one's native land. Expedite. Expedite. It's a verb meaning to quicken or to hasten. If you have a need for speed when shipping a package, you should expedite it with express mail. Extraneous. Extraneous. It's an adjective meaning extra and unnecessary. Hikers know that they will strain their backs if they fill their backpacks with extraneous supplies. Extricate. Extricate. It's a verb meaning to free, disentangle, or extract. The child was extricated from the burning building by a brave firefighter. Facilitate. Facilitate. It's a verb meaning to make easier. The new dormitory is full of the most modern facilities, which should greatly facilitate things for the students living there. By the way, the root of this word, facile, means easy in French. Fallow. Fallow. It's an adjective meaning barren or uncultivated. In the fall, most farmers allow their fields to lie fallow. Feasible. Feasible. It's an adjective meaning doable, possible, able to be accomplished. If that limousine company's fees are reasonable, then using their service for the prom should be feasible. Florid. Florid. It's an adjective meaning bright and flowery, especially in language. The author Gustave Flaubert was well known for his florid prose. By the way, the root of florid is flor, which means flower, and can be seen in such common words as florist and floral, and even in Florida. Foolhardy. Foolhardy. It's an adjective meaning daring, but in a foolish way. Riding a motorcycle without a helmet is considered illegal in some states and simply foolhardy in others. Frivolous. Frivolous. It's an adjective meaning silly, ridiculous, or lacking in importance. If something is frivolous, then it is, by definition, far from serious. Note that in the legal world, the term frivolous lawsuit is frequently used to describe a suit that is considered to be without merit. Furtive. Furtive. It's an adjective meaning sneaky, stealthy, or hidden. A seasoned fur thief usually operates in a furtive manner. Germain. Germain. It's an adjective meaning pertinent or related to the point at hand. A knowledge of German history is quite germain to the study of World War I and II.
Glutton. Glutton. It's a noun meaning a person who overeats. If a man has a big gut, he might just be a glutton. Grandiose. Grandiose. It's an adjective meaning overly grand. Though Joe, at this point, only knows how to play chopsticks, he harbors the grandiose notion that he will someday play the grand piano at Carnegie Hall. Gregarious. Gregarious. It's an adjective meaning sociable. Greg, who has a hilarious collection of jokes, is naturally gregarious and fun to be with. Gullible. Gullible. It's an adjective meaning unquestioning or easily fooled. When I told Fred that I ate a seagull for dinner last night, he was gullible enough to believe me. Hierarchy. Hierarchy. It's a noun meaning a power structure. At the top of the corporate hierarchy sits the CEO, who holds ultimate authority to hire or fire. Hyperbole. Hyperbole. It's a noun meaning exaggeration or overstatement. Though Joe says his bowling average is 300 points per game, I think that is mere hyperbole. Idiosyncrasy. Idiosyncrasy. It's a noun meaning minor odd personality trait or quirk. Mr. Jones is a completely normal guy in just about every way. One idiosyncrasy of his, however, is that he always wears green socks. Idolatry. Idolatry. It's a noun meaning worship of false idols. According to the Old Testament, those who worshipped before the idol of the golden calf were guilty of idolatry. Immutable. Immutable. It's an adjective meaning unchangeable. Many scientists believe that the laws of physics are immutable. Note that the root of this word is mute, which means change. Incongruous. Incongruous. It's an adjective meaning dissimilar, not matching. Congruent triangles are, by definition, never incongruous. Incorrigible. Incorrigible. It's an adjective meaning not able to be corrected. Some incorrigible criminals land back in jail almost as soon as they get out. Indifferent. Indifferent. It's an adjective meaning unconcerned or not caring one way or the other. If you are asked by your friend whether you would prefer to go out to the movie theater or just stay home and watch a video, and you reply, it makes no difference to me, then you are clearly indifferent on the matter. Indomitable. Indomitable. It's an adjective meaning unable to be defeated, unyielding. It is not possible to dominate someone who is indomitable. Ingenious. Ingenious. It's an adjective meaning very clever or brilliant. Thomas Edison was a genius who invented many ingenious inventions. Ingenuous. Ingenuous. It's an adjective meaning honest, open, or genuine. Because Sarah is genuine about all that she does, she is truly an ingenuous girl. Inherent. Inherent. It's an adjective 
meaning natural, or pertaining to the essential nature of something. Most birds have an inherent ability to fly, with the ostrich being a notable exception. By the way, an easy way to remember this word is to see in here in the word. Innovation. Innovation. It's a noun meaning a new invention. Mobile phones and email are two of the most popular and successful recent innovations in communication. By the way, note that the root of this word is nova, which is Latin for new. Variations on this word include innovate, innovative, and innovator. You can see nova in the word renovate, which means to renew. Insurmountable. Insurmountable. It's an adjective meaning unable to overcome. For most climbers, Mount Everest is a truly insurmountable mountain. Intractable. Intractable. It's an adjective meaning extremely stubborn, not able to be solved. Traffic congestion is, in many communities, a seemingly intractable problem. By the way, note that the root here is tract, which means to pull or drag. Intrepid. Intrepid. It's an adjective meaning brave, fearless, or lacking trepidation. When Amundsen assembled his team for a trip to the South Pole, he was looking for intrepid men. By the way, a U.S. Naval Museum in New York City is located on board a retired U.S. Naval aircraft carrier aptly named the USS Intrepid. Invoke. Invoke. It's a verb, and it means to call upon. The manager was quite vocal about invoking the spirit of Babe Ruth to help the Yankees win the big game. By the way, anytime you see a word that has voke in it, it usually means to call. Think of revoke or provoke as two other examples. Jovial. Jovial. It's an adjective meaning good-natured or merry. Joe is a jovial fellow who is always quick with a joke. Kinetic. Kinetic. It's an adjective meaning pertaining to motion. A kangaroo hops with a great deal of kinetic energy. Laconic. Laconic. It's an adjective meaning sparing in words or preferring action to speech. The ancient Spartans were from a region of Greece known as Laconia. As they usually preferred to fight about an issue rather than talk about it, their behavior was described as laconic. Laud. Laud. It's a verb meaning to praise. You applaud a performance to show that you laud the performance, which you found laudable. Listless. Listless. It's an adjective meaning lacking energy. Because Mr. Jones lost his grocery list, he didn't eat anything for several days and eventually became quite listless. Loquacious. Loquacious. It's an adjective meaning talkative. An effective public speaker should be both eloquent and loquacious. Malice. Malice. It's a noun meaning evil intent. Because Alice is full of malice, she treats the world in wicked and malicious ways. By the way, you should note that just about any word beginning with mal indicates something bad. Mellifluous. Mellifluous. It's an adjective meaning smooth or flowing. 
Because Duke Ellington's satin doll is both mellow and fluid, it can be said to have a mellifluous sound. Mendicant, mendicant. It's an adjective meaning extremely poor. That mendicant man can't afford to mend his ragged clothes. Meticulous, meticulous. It's an adjective meaning paying very close attention to detail. To become curator of New York's Metropolitan Museum, or Met for short, one must be extremely meticulous. Miser, miser. It's a noun meaning a person who is extremely stingy. Scrooge in Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol is originally portrayed as a miserable miser. Mitigate, mitigate. It's a verb meaning to lessen or moderate the severity of something. Mittens help to mitigate the effect of the cold winter winds. Mnemonic. Mnemonic. It's an adjective meaning pertaining to memory. Linking the M at the beginning of mnemonic to the M at the beginning of memory would be a good example of a mnemonic device. By the way, mnemonic is probably the only word in English that begins with a silent M. Also, I hope you'll see that this CD is actually full of many mnemonic devices. Mollify, mollify. It's a verb meaning to soothe, soften, pacify. Just as natural emollients in many skin creams are used to soften the skin, so Molly used her natural gentleness. To mollify just about any difficult situation. Morose, morose. It's an adjective meaning sad or gloomy. When Moe's rosebush began to fade, he became quite morose. Myopic, myopic. It's an adjective meaning nearsighted or lacking foresight. Because my optic nerve is somewhat damaged, I am a bit myopic. Noxious, noxious. It's an adjective meaning harmful. Tailgating at high speeds is both a noxious and obnoxious habit. Nurture, nurture. It's a verb meaning. To care for, it is in the nature of most mothers to nurture their children. Opaque, opaque. It's an adjective meaning impossible to see through. Because the waters were churned by the storm, the usually clear lake became quite opaque. Optimistic, optimistic. It's an adjective meaning having a positive outlook. My optometrist is always friendly and smiling, so I suppose he is an optimistic optometrist. Parsimony, parsimony. It's a noun meaning stinginess. Due to his parsimony, he does not like to part with his money. Pecuniary, pecuniary. It's an adjective meaning pertaining to money. It is a peculiar pecuniary fact that the origin of the word salary comes from salt, which was used as a form of payment in the Roman army. Penury, penury. It's a noun meaning poverty. When you're down to your last penny, you're in penury. Perfidious, perfidious. It's an adjective meaning treacherous 
or disloyal. A perfectly hideous act can often be called perfidious. Perpetual, perpetual. It's an adjective meaning continuous or without end. Cats and dogs perpetually top the list of favorite pets in America. Pessimism, pessimism. It's a noun meaning a gloomy outlook. On a recent camping trip to the North Woods, I was relentlessly attacked by hordes of mosquitoes, and I eventually gave up any hope of enjoying the trip. I guess you could say that those pesky pests were the cause of my pessimism. By the way, variations on this word are pessimist and pessimistic. Philanthropist, philanthropist. It's a noun meaning a person who donates large sums of money to charitable causes. Phil donated one million dollars. To his college's anthropology department, thereby becoming a philanthropist. By the way, make note of the root of this word. One root is phil, which means love, and the other root is anthrop, which means person. Piecemeal, piecemeal. It's both an adjective and an adverb, and it means one piece at a time. Bit by bit, a seven-course meal is a very large meal, and it's best to eat it piecemeal rather than all at once. Pine, pine. It's a verb meaning to long for, to yearn for, to miss extremely. The porcupine at the zoo pined for his beautiful pine tree. Back home. Platitude, platitude. It's a noun, meaning an overused saying or trite remark. Because that politician has a very plain attitude, he often speaks in platitudes. Posterity, posterity. It's a noun meaning future generations. I'm pasting these photos into my photo album mainly for posterity, which, of course, will be post me. Potentate, potentate. It's a noun meaning ruler, monarch, or powerful person. Because he is the sole ruler of a very potent state, he can be considered a potentate. Precocious, precocious. It's an adjective meaning characterized by early development. A few preteens are so precocious that they are able to enter high school at the age of twelve. Privation, privation. It's a noun meaning a condition or result of deprivation or loss. When someone deprives you of something, you suffer from privation. Prodigal, prodigal. It's an adjective meaning wasteful or reckless with money. Mozart's father, recognizing that young Wolfgang was a child prodigy, prayed that he would not grow up to become a prodigal son. Profligate, profligate. It's an adjective, and this also means reckless in spending. If you are profligate with your profits, you will soon be bankrupt. Profound, profound. It's an adjective meaning deep. Many pro golfers have found that Tiger Woods has profound skill. At the game of golf, propensity, propensity. It's a noun meaning tendency. Pro wrestlers have a propensity 
to act with intensity. Protégé, protégé. It's a noun, and it means a person who is groomed for a position, someone who is taken under the wing of another. By definition, a protégé is protected and directed by his or her mentor. Provincial, provincial. It's an adjective, and it means first of all of or pertaining to a province. Secondly, it can also mean narrow-minded. The ancient Romans believed that the people in the outlying provinces were, by definition, much more provincial and less cosmopolitan than the inhabitants of Rome. Prudent, prudent. It's an adjective meaning wise. A student who is prudent will prepare for the SAT. Pugnacious, pugnacious. It's an adjective meaning combative or tending to fight. Most pugilists, better known as boxers, are pugnacious by nature. Quiescent, quiescent. It's an adjective meaning quiet, dormant, or temporarily inactive. The quiescent volcano is quiet for now. Raconteur, raconteur. It's a noun meaning a person who tells stories that are usually witty and amusing. A raconteur is, in a sense, a recounter of stories. Ramification, ramification. It's a noun meaning a branching out or a consequence of a problematic situation. The main ramification of the Rams' move to St. Louis. Was the fact that Los Angeles was left without a pro football team? Rancid, rancid. It's an adjective meaning foul or putrid. Sid ran after the butcher who had sold him the rancid meat. Rancor, rancor. It's a noun meaning anger or ill will. When the sailor dropped the anchor on my foot, I was overcome with rancor. Rebuff, rebuff. It's a verb meaning to snub or beat back. Buffy the Vampire Slayer has made a career out of rebuffing vampires. Rectify, rectify. It's a verb. Meaning to fix or set right. To rectify a situation is, by definition, to correct it. Rectitude, rectitude. It's a noun meaning uprightness or moral virtue. That dude with a very correct attitude has a lot of rectitude. Redolent, redolent. It's an adjective meaning fragrant or scented. Dole pineapples are redolent of Hawaii. Remedial, remedial. It's an adjective meaning of or pertaining to a remedy. In some colleges today, certain incoming freshmen. Must take remedial math courses as a remedy for their rather weak math skills. Remiss, remiss. It's an adjective meaning at fault or negligent. The outfielder was remiss in missing the easy pop fly. Remunerative, remunerative. It's an adjective meaning. Resulting in monetary gain, profitable. If you want to make money, 
you need to engage in remunerative activities. Reparations. Reparations. It's a noun meaning money to be paid for injury or damage. After World War I, the victorious Allies forced Germany to agree to heavy reparations to repair the damage that German troops had wrought. Replete. Replete. It's an adjective meaning full of or filled with. The gap is completely replete with pleated khakis. Reprimand. Reprimand. It's a verb meaning to scold or blame. The coach demanded that the referee reprimand the opposing player for unsportsmanlike conduct. Reproach. Reproach. It's a noun meaning blame or disapproval. Joe Torrey is a coach who is beyond reproach. Rescind, rescind. It's a verb meaning to take back or recall. Would it be a sin to rescind summer vacation for high school students? Respite, respite. It's a noun meaning a brief rest or break. Despite being tired, he refused to take a respite. Revile, revile. It's a verb meaning to hate or detest. In one particularly humorous Seinfeld episode, Newman reviles broccoli as a vile weed. Rhetoric, rhetoric. It's a noun meaning skillful use of language or just language in general. In Gone with the Wind, Rhett Butler was known for his retorts and for his rhetoric. Ribald, ribald. It's an adjective meaning vulgarly humorous. Mr. Sullivan's wife tends to elbow her husband in the ribs whenever he tells a ribald joke. Robust. Robust. It's an adjective meaning strong or hearty. Rob, the bouncer, who likes to bust heads, is quite robust. Scant. Scant. It's an adjective meaning minimal. If you can't even add two plus two, you must have very scant knowledge of mathematics. Scrutinize, scrutinize. It's a verb meaning to examine closely. A quality control inspector at a screw factory needs good eyes to scrutinize every screw. By the way, the related noun is scrutiny. Seemly, seemly. It's an adjective meaning proper or suitable. The seams on an Armani suit are usually stitched in a very seemly fashion. It would be unseemly if it were not so. Serpentine, serpentine. It's an adjective meaning like a serpent or snake. Serpents slither with a serpentine motion. Sluggish. Sluggish. It's an adjective meaning slow moving or hard to arouse. A slug is a sluggish bug. Sophomoric. Sophomoric. It's an adjective literally meaning of or pertaining to a sophomore, which happens to mean literally wise fool. Certain college sophomores tend to engage in sophomoric behavior. Stayed, stayed. It's an adjective 
meaning bland or sober, and I'll spell that. It's spelled S-T-A-I-D. The traditional image of an old maid is quite staid. Strident, strident. It's an adjective meaning loud or harsh or shrill. After the game, in response to some strident heckling, the outfielder decided to stride over to the bleachers and punch one of the hecklers in the nose. Subsidize, subsidize. It's a verb meaning to assist financially. The manufacture of subs is subsidized by the federal government. By the way, the noun here is subsidy. Subtle, subtle. It's an adjective meaning not overt, nuanced, or subject to fine distinctions. Many young men think that day-old stubble is a subtle indicator of their masculinity. Supercilious, supercilious. It's an adjective meaning haughty or arrogant. Many superstars tend to be somewhat supercilious. Superfluous, superfluous. It's an adjective meaning unnecessary or extraneous. Literally, it means flowing above. Here's a sentence. Getting a flu shot after you have already gotten the flu would be rather superfluous. Surreptitious. Surreptitious. It's an adjective meaning secret or stealthy. Some reptiles are naturally quite surreptitious. Sycophant. Sycophant. It's a noun meaning brown noser or flatterer. Many of the stars in Hollywood soon become sick of the sycophants who so often surround them. Taciturn, taciturn. It's an adjective meaning quiet or reserved. Tommy, who likes to turn down the volume, is quite taciturn. Tempestuous, tempestuous. It's an adjective meaning of or pertaining to a tempest or very stormy. In Shakespeare's The Tempest, Caliban is known for his rather tempestuous temper. Tenacious, tenacious. It's an adjective meaning unyielding or forceful. In the world of tennis, Andre Agassi is known as being very tenacious. Tenet, tenet. It's a noun meaning a key belief or principle. The Ten Commandments form the tenets of the Judeo-Christian tradition. Tentative, tentative. It's an adjective meaning possible but subject to change. Alexandra made a tentative appointment with her hairstylist for ten o'clock on Thursday morning. Theology, theology. It's a noun meaning the study of religion. Theodore, who is thinking of becoming a priest, plans to study theology in school. By the way, the root of theology is theo, which means God. Timorous, timorous. It's an adjective meaning timid or fearful. A wee mouse is just a timid and timorous beastie. Tirade, tirade. It's a noun meaning a lengthy and abusive verbal attack. After my raid on the refrigerator, my mother launched into a tirade against me. Torpor, torpor. It's a noun meaning lack of energy 
or listlessness. The movement of a tortoise seems marked by torpor. Transcend, transcend. It's a verb meaning to surpass or go beyond. The patient, who refused the dentist's offer of Novocaine before the procedure, told the dentist that he planned to rely on transcendental meditation. In effect, he was hoping to transcend dental medication. Trite. Trite. It's an adjective meaning overused or unoriginal. If a remark is trite, it is a trifle light on insight. Truncate. Truncate. It's a verb meaning to shorten or reduce. When the hyena bit off half of the poor elephant's trunk, the trunk was effectively truncated. Utopia. Utopia. It's a noun meaning a perfect place, usually imaginary. Some residents of Utica, New York, believe that they have found the closest possible thing on earth to a utopia. By the way, the word utopia comes from a book written by St. Thomas More、uh, some 400 years ago, and the word utopia literally means nowhere in Greek. And in this book, More described his view of a perfect, idealized world. Venerate, venerate. It's a verb meaning to hold in high regard or to greatly respect. As most Americans tend to venerate him, we can say that Abraham Lincoln is truly venerable. Veracity, veracity. It's a noun meaning truthfulness. It is a fact checker's job to verify the veracity of the statements in an article. Verbose, verbose. It's an adjective meaning wordy. People who are very verbal are usually verbose. Verdant, verdant. It's an adjective meaning lush or filled with greenery. Vermont, the Green Mountain State, is quite verdant. Vilify, vilify. It's a verb. Meaning to make into a villain. Victor was vilified for the villainous act of giving top secret information to the enemy. Virulent, virulent. It's an adjective meaning poisonous or toxic. Some viruses are quite virulent. Volatile, volatile. It's an adjective, meaning both tending to evaporate quickly, and also explosive. The adhesive compound used to hold these tiles in place is quite volatile. Wary, wary. It's an adjective meaning cautious. After I saw the sign warning visitors to beware of dog. I became quite wary of any approaching canines. Wane, wane. It's a verb meaning to decrease or diminish. After John Wayne's retirement, the popularity of the western began to wane. Whimsical, whimsical. It's an adjective meaning fickle, changeable. Moody, or subject to whims, because she is both very rich and very whimsical, she sometimes jets to Paris on a whim. Wistful, wistful, it's an adjective meaning filled with regret and longing. Now that Will is flat broke and hungover, 
He's wistful for that fistful of dollars that he blew on whiskey last night. Well, you've come to the end of the Vocabulary Booster Volume 2. I bet you're feeling smarter already. If you can find the time to listen to this CD again, that would be great, as repetition often plays a key role in memory retention. If you have any questions or comments about the Vocabulary Booster series, feel free to contact me online at inhometutoring.com or call me toll-free at 800-655-5580. Take care and good luck.